Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be looking at working with variables. What is a variable? So it's an object that holds a single value of a certain data type. The value can change and variables are prefixed with an at symbol. Typical uses for variables are as a counter in looping, using conditional logic. So if the, the value of the variable is this, execute this, if not, execute this. Uh, saving a value that we may need to call on later on within uh, a query. Assigning a value from a parameter. So if a value is passed in from a parameter and we need to use that, change that value or making a regular query more dynamic, which is what we're going to focus on in this video. So we're going to jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and go through some examples. So I've got this query now, which is a, a simple select. We're looking at a sales customer ID and just the total spend per customer. And we're looking at a certain date range. So I'm just gonna go ahead and execute that now just to show you that does return results. Now, let's just imagine that I run this query quite regularly. A lot of different users come up to me and ask me to run this query with different date ranges. Um, so we're just looking at writing ad hoc queries here. We can uh, develop further with vari uh, variables and they can work with installed procedures. Uh, as well. So let's imagine that I, I get constantly requested uh, to run this, this saved query um, with different date ranges by different individuals. So what I want to do is make this query as dynamic and less error prone uh, as I can. And I'm going to look at using variables to do that. It's one of their, their main purposes. Now I'm just going to lower that query a second. So we're going to start off, uh, what we need to do when working with variables is first declare our variable. So we start off with the keyword declare, and then we give our variable a name, and that's always prefixed with the at symbol. So in this case, I'm going to call it start date, and then we must also give it a data type. So with this particular query, I'm looking at a, a date range. So I'm going to give it a date data type. And I'm also going to declare another variable for the end date that's going to be used as part of the query. So within the declare statement, we can declare multiple variables just in a comma separated list. So if I go ahead and add those variables to my query now, so where the sales date is greater than or equal to our start date, and less than or equal to our end date. So I'm going to go ahead and put those variables into my query like so. But the next thing we need to do is have a look at how to set those variables. So we need to actually assign values to the variables for them to be used. So if I was to go ahead and execute that now, the variables don't have any value, so no results are going to be returned. So the first way we could do that would be to assign a default value to our variables. And we can do that within the declare statement. So we're just working at the top of the page now. I'm just going to extend this. Um, so we've got our declare, our variable name, our data type. And we're just going to add our date in there. And I'm going to do the same for end date as well. Uh, so I'll just set that to the end of March. So if I go ahead and execute that, now we get the same results. So we actually have values within those variables. Another way we can set the values within variables is actually using the set statement. So the keyword set, and then we're just going to give our variable name, and then we're going to set that to equal to, we'll say, the 10th of January. And we'll also set our end date to be the 20th of January. So we can see now that at the top of the page we declare our variables, we assign default values, but because our set statement is executed after that, our variable values will change. And I'll go ahead and execute that now, and we can see the results have changed. The spend has reduced because we're only looking at a 10 day period. 
Another way we can set the values of variables is simply within a select statement itself. So if we select at start date equals, and then what we're going to select this to is the minimum, uh, I believe it's sales underscore date, yeah, uh, from our sales table. Uh, notice that is within parentheses, so it's a, it's a subquery we're using as part of the select statement. And if I go ahead and execute that now, and again, we've got different results. One thing we can also do, and is very important for working with variables, and particularly debugging queries where we need to see how that variable value changes over time, is we can actually select those values of that variable. So it's something I do quite a lot when looking through quite extensive stored procedures. I want to see what the value of the variable is at that point. Now our options to output that are, we could use a print statement, but in this case, we're just going to simply select that variable value. So at this point, if I select at start date, and I'm just gonna call this stage one start, I'm also going to select the end date as stage one end. So if I go ahead and execute that now, I can see I've actually got the results returned, which are returning the values of the variables. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in between the stages that these variable values change. So I'm going to put it after our set statement and again after our select statement. So we're going to check the value of the variables here after we've used our default values. After we've used our set statement, I'm going to check the value of the variables here. And then after we've used the select statement, I'm going to check the values of the variables here. To make this simple, I'm just going to com comment out my actual query that I'm running and go ahead and execute that. So we've got three results as expected. See the first result returns the default values we can see at the top. The second result returns the set values and the third result returns a different value for stage one as we've set that to the minimum sales date. As mentioned, that's extremely useful when looking through uh, a large stored procedure or a large query, particularly when a value of a variable changes over time. And also if you have some conditional logic within your, within your query as well. So if you have um, such a uh, sort of like an if statement to say if the value of the variable is this execute this if it's this execute this else execute this we want to know which of those queries is actually being executed so we can see the value of that variable at that time so I'm just going to go ahead and remove these now uh, so I'll just leave it as the set statement which is what I typically use in a query like this uh, just for clarity, really, there's no uh, preference. Uh, and I'll go ahead and remove the default values and recomment in my actual query. So, again, if I go ahead and execute that, I'm free to change these date values as I wish. And it's particularly useful if we have a query that's returning multiple result sets. So if I had multiple queries that are referring to the same column, then I can just set that value once and then I know it's that value. I don't have to go through the query and keep setting that value in all the different areas that it's referenced. What we also need to mention about variables is they're only available within the query that is being executed. So if I was to highlight just my query here and go ahead and try to execute that, I would get an error to say, I don't know what this variable is. It has to be part of the query. Uh, the alternative to that is if we're working with global variables. So we can declare global variables simply by putting a double at symbol. And then that's available to other query windows that's saved within the database and we can reference that later on in other queries. You'll also see variables being used in looping logic. So initially what we typically do there is set the value of a variable, set a limit, so we keep looping until it hits this limit, and then we'd have something within the query that would increase the value of that variable as well. And we will demonstrate how to write looping queries in other videos. 
Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do check out my other videos on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. There is lots of great content on there and I am uploading regularly. Click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.